Do you yeah, want to show I'm, Tammy this real quick? Uh, obviously. Okay. Look, I live for these TikToks. I curate oh. TikToks from the marginalized communities, people that are underrepresented. I give them a platform. That your stories. Thank we you. have the same for you page. <laughs> I die for your TikToks. Well, you're going to hear the sneak welcome. peek. Okay. I, don't, I don't know how this is going to make you feel. I always try to warn people. This okay. might put you in a different oh, mood. No. <laughs> a lot of All times right. they bring me down. All right. Here we go. Hi, welcome to my airplane home. My name is Bruce Campbell. I'm 73 years old, and I live in a Boeing 727 jetliner in Hillsboro. <laughs> this aircraft was all tourist class. There was no business class, no first class. It was tourist from flight deck all the way to the tail. This is a futon <laughs> sofa. This is my primitive shower. The outdoor shower was so mm. harsh yeah. that I had to <laughs> establish at least some place where I could you know, take an indoor shower. My lavatory is a temporary sink and a clothes washer. Kitchen area, not much of a kitchen. I'm a nerd, I don't cook. 727 food service cart, which serves as my pantry. The microwave oven and the toaster <laughs> oven are sufficient. In fact, I almost never use the toaster oven. It's almost always the microwave <laughs> oven. Observer, inspector, captain, the sole authority for the flight. <laughs> this person may bark out orders to any of the rest and they must obey. I have no regrets about pursuing this vision. <laughs> it's fun. It's Jetliner horrible. homes are really cool. <laughs> How uh, much do you hate this, Tom? Well, you know what it actually made me think about is a couple of things. First of all, how in, in some ways you don't ever really, like it's good to really never grow up. Like this is what a kid would yeah. do. Yeah. Um, he's a harmless guy. I think it would, I think it'd be creepy to, to visit him. I think yeah. you'd be in there and you'd be like, this guy. He didn't guy. have a couch. He, you oh, know, shit, he just had a bed. But he's so committed and obsessed to his jetliner living yeah. <laughs> um, that, you you know, it's the kind of thing where it'd be fun to walk through and you'd be like, but if he was like, you, you want to stay? He'd be like, mm, yeah, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. Like there is there is a level of creepiness to this. Yeah. He's in the fucking woods in a, in a fucking Boeing. So many questions. Yeah. First of all, who is he paying $370 a month to? I don't get that. Maybe those are his all his expenses. Well, the the electricity, which probably runs just on a generator. Right. He's out in the middle of nowhere. Did he just find a plane in the middle and of move the in? Woods? Did he move the plane in? Like that's yeah. You know, I, just, I just feel like we were just all I was waiting for was the so one depressing. cabinet thing to open. He'd be like, "Here's my dolls that I fuck." You know, like I, that's the only thing <laughs> yeah. this is missing. Yeah, yeah. the fake flight attendant. Yeah. But I thought, wouldn't it be funny if he's yeah, like, flight. he's actually like a multimillionaire, he, he, and he's he, like, "I spent ten million dollars revamping this because I yes. love it." I would You're not like, be surprised. Oh my god. Would not be surprised. I honestly think it's kind of cool. You've seen those people who like will buy an old church and just live in the yeah. church. Mikey I love Hanger. that shit. He gothed his up. This guy wow. in Pennsylvania. Shout out to Mikey Hanger on TikTok. I love that shit. <sighs> Living in non houses. I know. You know? But this one's too small. This sucks. Yeah. This is fucking and the depressing. Shower, the shower was just half of a shower. I don't like this. I don't want to take a shit in an airplane lab. No. No. And he's like, the chair, captain. Oh, this is a new lane. This is um, white guys who do martial arts in their apartment. They like to show you how fast they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, did and the he sweatpants pulled oh, up? Oh, it's the best. Did he speed up the footage? Yes. Do you think? Okay. Yes. So they they cheat. Up. They he's speed up the footage. You think that he's like a superhero. Now, what's interesting about this one, it looks to be a foreign one because those water bottles look no, this European. No, thousand percent foreign. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. would say Eastern European, yeah? Could be. There's a lot I, of places. I recognize this could be. that water bottle. It's not in the <laughs> U.S. of A. I'll mm. tell you that. Yeah. I was almost kidnapped, and quick thinking saved my life. So back during 2020, I was taking a lot of long walks because we were in lockdown. And like a moron, I had the same pattern. I walked the same route every day. Well, in one afternoon, I was walking the isolated highway out here by my house. There were cornfields on either side of the highway, and no houses anywhere for at least a solid mile. As I'm walking, I hear a car coming up behind me, so I step aside to let the car pass so that I can carry on. This car, he does drive past me, but only about 10 yards and then stops right in front of me. And so I immediately stop walking and I watch him and I'm like, what is he doing? And this black sedan is just sitting there about 10 yards in front of me, waiting for me to walk past it. And let me tell you, a fear came over me that I cannot explain and I have never had before or since then. That fear that tells you something is very wrong. I continue to stand there. I don't walk past the car because something tells me if I try to walk past that car, he's going to open that door and try to take me. So I'm standing there. I'm waiting it out. And this guy, I see the reverse lights flash, which means he put his car in park. 
The man put his car in park and was now looking at me through the driver's side mirror. It's just me and him. There is nobody. I, if I scream, nobody is going to hear me. There's fields on either side. There's nowhere I can run except backwards. So I think fast. I don't have pepper spray. I don't have my pistol on me, but I do have my phone. So I grab my phone and I immediately just act like I'm calling 911. I didn't actually dial 911 because I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Whatever's about to happen is going to happen in seconds and no cop is going to get to me in time. But I wanted this guy to think that I was talking to the police. And it seemed to work. As soon as I pulled my phone out and started acting like I was talking, the reverse lights go back, he puts the car in drive, and he takes off. At this point, I actually call my best friend, Kevin, who lives about a mile down the road. How's Kevin and I, doing? He answers the phone, thank God. And I said, Kevin, I'm in a situation. There's a guy that I think is getting ready to take me. I need you to get here. I need you to get here now. This is where I'm at. Kevin doesn't even put shoes on or anything. He grabs his keys. He jumps in his truck and he's like, all right, I'm on my way. I'm coming to you. Stay on the phone with me. And y'all, something in me just knew, like, even though that car drove away, he's coming back. And I'm just waiting and I'm watching for that car to have turned around and come back for me. And I'm waiting to see whose car I'm going to see first, this guy or my friend Kevin, who is going to show up and get me first. And thank God I see Kevin's truck around the corner first and I wave him and he flies over to me and I jump in the truck, shut the door and we take off. But y'all, I kid you not, as we're taking off, we look in the rearview mirror and y'all, that sedan had turned around and it had come back. (sighs) And And I said, Kevin, that's the car. That's the car. He came back. And we're still driving away, but we're watching him in the rearview mirror. And y'all, he parks his car right where I was standing. He gets out of his car, and we see him, and he is looking for me. Oh, man. And that phone call to Kevin most likely saved my life. I don't know. What, I mean, that was what, super what if he dramatic. just wanted directions? I think I think he could have. He, he might have been looking for what, he, what fell out of his window when he was. You know what I mean? Like he he opened his window and something. He lost something. He dropped something. Yeah, this bitch is all hysterical. Yeah, Jesus she's like, Christ. She's like mine. Tuition saved my life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Perhaps. I would have been like, hey, what's up? You know, so, man, you I w- looking for me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You all right out here? That, that would have been me. That was so much. I don't know if I can continue. I mean, that was really. Yeah, that was exhausting. <clears throat> I know that you like these kind of near kidnapping murder stories i just thought it might make you sexually aroused or i don't know what I. Well, that's what to. i'm saying i'm ready to come yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's gotta show. go bust a nut yeah, yeah. all right oh yeah um it's a cool story that's a great story i just story. thought you like yeah. to hear a nice bedtime tale that, that is fantastic like. Ooh, mommy did you enjoy that highlight why don't you have more fun click around click here we're here we're here we're here we're here look Try it out. Have more fun. Why don't you subscribe? That way, every time a video drops, you can be notified. You're not going to miss a moment of denim. Okay? Try it out. Be her.